Would you do me a favor and open the box? Yep. <gasps> Chocolate cake from Kiki's Delivery Service. I really needed to sweep before we started this. Thank you to ridge.com slash chef PK for sponsoring today's video. I can now hold 12 cards with cash without losing speed or strength. Made of premium titanium materials. What is this? Brick brother, you've returned. You think you can get rid of me? It is I, Deal. I have come back stronger than ever. Take this. Pathetic. So easily. Nunny. With a lifetime warranty and free worldwide shipping, I cannot be easily defeated, big brother. You cannot surpass me. I can't keep up. Where is he? No. Use the links below at ridge.com slash chef PK for 10% off and free worldwide shipping. So after getting a nice sweep, we are going to start making our cake. And for this, we're gonna need about two cups worth of all-purpose flour, two cups worth of white granulated sugar, one and a half cups worth of dark cocoa powder. I like this Dutch cocoa, it's cheap, it's local, it's nearby. Followed by one teaspoon worth of salt, one teaspoon worth of baking powder, and then two teaspoons worth of baking soda. Stir this together just by hand, just a little bit so that way you get some of those flavors incorporated before we add in our wet ingredients. So in hindsight, cracking your three eggs into a bowl first and then dumping it in would probably be a better idea so you don't have a chance of getting any shells in. Add in one cup worth of cultured buttermilk, this is the good stuff, followed by two ounces worth of vegetable oil, and you only need two ounces for this, no, and a squirt, I guess. Your other liquid is gonna be one cup worth of water, and then we're also gonna add in a little bit of vanilla. I just like to use the cap to measure this, so uh, two capfuls of vanilla. Now hear me out, Waifu swears by this French vanilla creamer, so we're gonna add in two teaspoons worth of French vanilla creamer to this, followed by some powdered milk. I love Nido, it's delicious, I grew up with it. So we're gonna add in, I don't know, like two and a half tablespoons worth. Now the last ingredient is going to be some jello pudding. You can omit this if you want a cakier cake, the jello pudding gives it more of a brownier cake texture. Go ahead and mix this on low speed to get everything incorporated so you don't end up with a disaster in your kitchen. And once it's on low, you can increase the speed just a little bit to start forming your batter. You do wanna intermittently stop this to start scraping it all down so everything kind of gets incorporated and you know, give your batter a taste because you have to. And I noticed that my batter was a little bit thick so I ended up adding in another four ounces of buttermilk to kind of bring this to a better viscosity for cake. You want this to really just look like Pillsbury cake out of a box because let's be honest, it's probably some of the best cake. Now my GoPro didn't decide to record this, but you are gonna need two nine inch cocoa dusted pans. All you need to do is spray the inside with some nonstick spray and dust them with cocoa powder and then evenly split your batter in between both of those pans. Make sure you get all that good good out of there because I mean, otherwise you're just gonna eat it off the spoon, right? Now we're gonna be baking both of these off at about 350 degrees for about 40 minutes to start. Some ovens may go longer or shorter, but what you really want to have happen is that when you stick a toothpick in it, it comes out relatively clean. And I say relatively clean because of that jello pudding that's in there, keeps things more or less really moist. Mine went for a total of about 45 minutes before I ended up pulling them out and letting them cool in the pans for about 10 additional minutes before you really start messing with them. As you can see by my amazing shorts, time has passed and we can try to remove these out of their pans. Just give it a flip after loosening up the sides and you should be able to pop your cake, pop the cake right, pop the cake right out. Come on, come on, nope, okay. Let's try it again. You're gonna go ahead and loosen up the sides one more time just to make sure it's nice and loosey-goosey and then give it a little tap onto your baking rack. You wanna make sure you cool these on your baking rack so that way it does have a little bit of airflow underneath it as well so it cools down properly. Pop out your second pan right next to it, and I was really happy with these. Now let these cool upside down for about 10 minutes before we flip them over. You do wanna make sure you flip them over so they don't continue to collapse on themselves. And once you have these in this position, we're gonna let these cool down completely before we decide to add any buttercream frosting to it. Now for our chocolate frosting, I am using both cream cheese and unsalted butter. You wanna make sure both of these are at room temperature and they're nice and soft, otherwise they won't mix well. Go ahead and dump in eight ounces worth of cream cheese and eight ounces worth of butter directly into your mixer and affix this with your paddle attachment. This is going to start aerating and whipping the two together to give you a start to your frosting. Now we're gonna add in two capfuls of vanilla or a half a teaspoon to your butter and your cream cheese, followed by three cups worth of powdered sugar. This is gonna be a significant amount of powdered sugar in here, and this is just the first half of our powdered sugar. I like to mix them in batches just so that way they fully incorporate and hydrate without really turning into a clumpy mess. 
which it still kind of turns into a clumpy mess, but give it some time. Once everything starts coming together, it'll start to emulsify. Once it starts to emulsify, add in two additional cups worth of powdered sugar to this. You can also add in a little bit more if you want it sweeter or less if you want it less sweet, but that's totally up to you. Now, while it's mixing, I do add in just a touch of whole milk, and we're only using about one teaspoon at a time to try to loosen up this batter so it's easier to spread out later. I ended up adding in three total teaspoons worth of whole milk to this to get it to that really beautiful frosting-like texture. And the only way to tell if it's done is by sticking your finger in it and trying it. Now, remove about a half a cup worth of your vanilla frosting, and we're gonna set this aside as it's going to be the decoration part for the kiki part of the cake. Now the rest of the frosting is gonna be chocolate, so we're gonna add in about one cup worth of our Dutch cocoa powder directly to the vanilla frosting and start bringing this together slowly so we don't explode into a giant powder of cocoa. After whipping this together, I noticed that it started to thicken up, so I added in about two teaspoons worth of whole milk to this mixture because the cocoa powder does slightly thicken the frosting. Once that's done, go ahead and remove this from your mixer because you no longer need it and get all of that good, good butter, cream, cheesy, goodness, chocolatey delight right into a bowl. Now this can be refrigerated, but since we're going to go ahead and frost relatively soon, I am going to leave this out until we need it as long as it's not too hot where you are. So my cakes came out relatively even and I was really happy with how they looked. They are a little dense because of that jello pudding, but overall they feel really nice. Trim off just a little bit off the top of your cake so that way they sit a little bit better on top of each other when you go to frost them. And remember, don't throw away that top part of your cake because that is delicious and it goes really well as a snack. Now take your second cake, turn it upside down and just see how it sits. My second cake didn't sit very nicely on top of the first one, so I went ahead and trimmed off the top of this cake as well, making sure to not cut my hands because everything is moving around, but it's, it's gonna be fine. Give the inside a taste because you have to and make sure they look super even. Once you feel like they look good, grab yourself a plate. I'm using a pie dish for this and I actually used a little bit of double-sided tape to affix it to the pie dish before cutting any excess parchment paper right off of it. This is gonna help it so that way I'm not really fighting the parchment when I go to start frosting the cake. Now, once you have your pie plate and parchment ready to go, take your first cake and lay it right on top of that parchment so that way we can start frosting this. I like to add in about a quarter inch of chocolate frosting to the first cake just so that way it's not too full because sometimes it can be a pain if you have too much frosting. It'll seep out the sides and whatever the case is. You do you, but I went with about a quarter of an inch. Now take the second cake and place it right on top. I pressed this just very gently just so that way I could see if any frosting came out the sides, which it didn't really, so I was good to go. Now start frosting frosting your cake. This is not going to be perfect. It's not going to be beautiful unless you're a pro, which I am absolutely not. I look like a three-year-old trying to frost cake, but it's going to be fine because it's going to be good, right? That's what counts. This very chocolate cake is the reason why Chef Christina Tosi does not frost the sides of her cake. Look at this. It's glorious and it's a mess, but it's mine. So now we gotta try to freehand the kiki and the writing and everything right on top of this chocolate cake. And this is gonna be a little bit of a task. But to start, I tried to trace everything directly onto the chocolate cake with a skewer just so I had somewhere to land with all of my frosting. I mean, I could have gone into AutoCAD and made my own stencil and 3D printed it and used that to cut out some marzipan or to actually cut out some fondant, but we're gonna freehand this because that is the spirit of this cake. Once you have everything kind of stenciled out, you can go ahead and start filling it in with your white frosting to start. Remember, we do also need green and red, so try not to use all of this because this is all we have left unless you wanna make more. Once you have your kiki of some sort, on top of your cake, go ahead and start filling in the writing right after that. The writing actually didn't look half bad, so I was pretty happy with that. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove some of our white frosting and add in a little bit of red food coloring to do the little bow for Kiki. I added in about three total drops worth of red food coloring to give it that kind of reddish look. You can add more or less depending on your frosting, but then we also need to make some of the green frosting for the tree. So do the same thing, add in a little bit of your vanilla frosting with about one to two drops worth of green food coloring to get that green color. Now once you have everything ready, go ahead and get another pastry bag. I am reusing an old one that I had that I had washed out. Add in your green food coloring to start, or you could do your red, whatever you really want, but I'm going green first to start my tree and start decorating that little beautiful pine tree right onto your cake. And he's always watching. He's always watching. Remember, don't overthink this process. Just, you know, make it make it as good as you can. Now, after washing out that same bag, go ahead and add in your red frosting and finish the bow for Kiki. You can go ahead and just directly frost the top of it. And uh, there's our chocolate cake from Kiki's delivery service. It's, it's, you know what? It's fine. It, 
it's great. It's glorious. It's mine. I love it. There it is, guys. Kiki's Cake from Kiki's Delivery Service. And this thing, it's a monster. And I am no professional decorator. I will fully admit that I am terrible at decorating cakes, but it still is going to be delicious. And you know what? This is better shared with friends. So we're going to take this over to a friend's house, have some whiskey, eat some chocolate cake. Now we did end up slicing the cake, but you can go ahead and just use a spoon if you're a savage and you really want to go for it. This cake fed four people with just a portion of it. This is a big cake, guys. So if you have friends, family, whoever the case is, share it, make sure they're happy. This is what the cake looks like at that cross section. I was really happy with how this came out. After separating our cakes, we sat down, cracked open some whiskey, and talked about how we should do an outdoor camping trip where we film some Skyrim food over an open fire because that's going to be amazing. My name is Chef PK. Go share some cake with a friend today. Get subscribed and remember, keep playing with your food.